I'm Tom Rice with the Emerald Coast Honor Flight. I'm delighted to be here today, doubly because Honor Flight is a good thing to do and it's the right thing to do. We're going to tell you a little bit about the Honor Flight, and I think the best way to do that is to visit with somebody that's actually a World War II veteran that's been on the Honor Flight. So today we have Merle Eastman with us. Merle, welcome to the show. I'm, it's a pleasure to be here, certainly. Well, Merle, you've got the Honor Flight shirt on. Uh, you also are wearing a military hat, World War II veteran, and you served with pride. Tell us what this all meant to you to be able to go to the, our nation's capital and visit this site. For me and for my lifetime and family history that I'm writing, it, is a, it was a day to remember. I did not know before I went that there was such a place as the National Mall in our capital. And you've heard of Bob Dole, and, and, and Senator Bob Dole was instrumental in creating this World War II monument that was built in, in 2004, correct. that when it finally opened. Um, what did you think when you got off the bus and we started our way down to that, that site? Awesome. I, I can tell a story on this. When we uh, left the bus and got off the bus, there were our officers, Air Force officers in their dress blues, and they were all majors, sporting a major's leaf, grabbing wheelchairs off the luggage compartment of the bus and setting up the wheelchairs to pick up individuals that needed a wheelchair. And I got the biggest charge. I mean, it was my day to see majors working. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I told him that. And he, Merle, he I said, sense that you were an enlisted person in the Army. All the way. There you go. Okay. Well, it, it is always good to see, and we were, we were absolutely delighted. And, and frankly, you and I were on the same bus. We had three buses of World War II vets, uh, color-coded. Everybody had a, a code, and we rode on the number one bus because that was the bus that Congressman Jeff Miller uh, decided to ride on, he and his wife Vicki, mm -hmm. to join us from the airport out to the, the mall area. Um, you, know, you said you wanted to talk to Jeff Miller. What did you tell him when you, when you were at the mall? Well, I saw Jeff, the first time I got a chance to talk to him for a few minutes was at the, right after the wreath laying. He was visiting with uh, people and I visited with him. I, and uh, I told him, I said, what we need up in Washington County, I says, the Washington County is part of your district. I says, we need promotion. We need to get the honor group recognized to where people in Washington County know that it exists and they'd be falling over each other, getting to where they can get an application. And Not guess what? He said, you need to go talk to Merle Eastman. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we're here today. In World War II, you were stationed, I mean, your, your duty field was in Germany, in, in, the, in the European War. No, I was, uh, I started out, I was 19 years old. And, uh, Youngin. <laughs> we have to look at the fact, this was right after Depression, it was the tail end of Depression, and I just did not like school anymore. School wasn't good enough for me, I didn't have no money. My pockets didn't jingle, and the sign says, I want you, and uh, the Army was promoting in 1939 and 1940, and uh, so I enlisted in September of 1940, and the way these things go, and you learn a lot, I walked into a recruiter's on the 6th of September of 1940, and the first thing I said to him, well, he said to me, he said, young man, he said, what can I do for you? I said, well, I says, uh, I understand you're a recruiting sergeant. Yes, sir. And he says, um, what do you want? I says, I'd like to go to, I'd like communications in the Philippines. He says, son, he says, no quota. My quota's filled. I said, how about uh, Signal Corps in Hawaii? He says, son, he says, my quota's filled. He says, all I have is infantry Panama. 
I said, give it to me. So you got, you got hot <laughs> weather either way. <laughs> but I wanted to travel. I mean, I hadn't been anywhere. I was a farm boy off a farm. So I wanted to travel. Now you live you you live over here in Chipley now. Where did you where did you come from? Where where did you join the army? I originally from? I joined the army in New Hampshire. In New Hampshire. Concord, New Hampshire, because that was the only recruiting office that we could go to. Wherever we lived in the state, we had to go to Concord to see the recruiter. Okay. They well, didn't come to us. Yeah. <laughs> surprise, surprise. The advertising was in all the magazines, all the boy magazines, comic books and whatnot. Now, the, in those days, we had horses and we had trucks. And we had trucks. When you went to go to the honor flight on the day that, that you were heading over to the honor flight, I understand a limousine picked you up. Unbelievable. Day to remember. <laughs> well, your, your guardian was a, a fellow named Lynn Dominic, who is actually going to be a guardian again on a, on a, on a subsequent flight. Uh, he's volunteered to do this sort of thing. And since you lived in Chipley and the flight was flying out of Pensacola, Florida, you had a long trek, so how did this all work out? Well, it worked out great. Uh, uh, family took me to meet Lynn in Crestview the night, the day before the flight. I met him at I met Lynn at uh, Wendy's in Crestview. I had a sandwich, and I didn't pay for it because it was paid for. Whatever I ate was paid for because I was staying overnight. Anyway, I had my sandwich. Lynn says, are you ready to travel? Travel, where are we going? He says, well, I'm not staying here. He says, I'm not driving to Pensacola from here in the morning. And he says, I'm going, we're going to Pensacola. Okay, we, we got over the Pensacola Airport, got over Pensacola. O-Dark 30, so you're an Army guy, so you're used to getting up at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. When you got to the airport, Fantastic. You know, okay. Fantastic. Treat you okay. We're walking in. We got to the airport. We're walking in, and all of a sudden, here comes a lady walking towards us, and that was uh, Sheila, and... Uh, she made it her point to let us know who she was, and she says, are you looking for the USO? Sure am. And we went into the uh, uh, USO station, and we had coffee and donuts, and, and people started to mass in and getting from all, play, all, all directions. They, okay. Okay, early we, in the morning. We got you, your, you got your coffee and your donuts, and we went down to the, the, the flight area, and you know, a flight to a flight to D.C. on a charter plane is kind of a fun thing. Do you remember any of the the activities that went on during the flight that were that impressed you? Uh, we got some uh, mail, uh, but uh, uh, it was uh, inside the envelope was uh, two uh, pieces of artwork that was or letters that was done by school students to a. World War II veteran in a sealed envelope. We opened the envelope and we got a letter uh, from two school children that had written us a letter and they didn't even know us. Yeah. When you got to D.C., do you remember getting off the airplane in D.C. and the crowd that was there? The to... crowd in Washington, D.C., a band playing and uh, uh, we got squirted with water. The fire truck squirted us with water. Over the airplane. Uh, the airplane. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But it squirted my window. There you go. <laughs> I will be 88 on the, in, in May. In May. And, and the oldest gentleman who won the prize for being the oldest uh, honoree on this flight was uh, from Milton, Florida. Uh, Claude Davis was 100 years old. And I think you and he probably could run a marathon. Uh, I, I, met him, I met him at the uh, breakfast, the uh, uh, get acquainted breakfast. Get acquainted breakfast. Tell us about that. You know, we, we, we put the guardians together on this, uh, with the veterans that are going to, to arrive about two weeks before the flight. So you actually get to meet, in your case, Mr. Dominic, who is going to be, you know, keeping track of, you know, your needs. What did you think about that? I mean, did you, you get over to that breakfast and, and you know, was that, was that fun or what, what was that all I about? Got, I got over for that breakfast. Uh, my... Uh, Son took me down for breakfast, and he had a breakfast too. There you go. On, on the flight. I mean, 
Yeah. That morning, that you, morning breakfast. For those of us that have served as guardians, it can be quite terrifying because all of a sudden a family is perhaps turning over to, to the flight, uh, a family member, and, and we're, we were just as scared, I think, probably more fearful than you because you just don't know how it's all going to work out because you're making new friends really quick. So, did, did, was it organized? Did you, did, do you remember your time in the Maybe, Army? Things, you know how things weren't or, as organized? Well, after all the years in the military and everything is supposed to be organized and was organized, uh, this was very well organized. You could see that the military was connected with it somehow because of organization, prior planning. Well, a lot of us had our old clipboards that we drug off the shelf when we were first sergeants or that sort of thing. And, and you know, that, that clipboard comes in handy, you know. You're, you're, you know, it's a jump back for all of us. So, well, now, we got to D.C., you know, you, you, there was an orchestra playing when you got off the plane. Uh, we, lots of people saluting, as I recall. Uh, what, do you, what do you remember about all that, getting on the buses and everything? Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Only like, uh, fantastic, but awesome. What did you think about the, the largest bronze statue in the world that sits there, the, the, the Iwo Jima uh, Monument? What was your <laughs> thoughts on that? When you can stand on the ground and the platform that those soldiers up there are on, you can't reach the top of the platform. It's up so high in the air. I mean, it is massive. I did not realize, I'd seen pictures, and it's hard to, from pictures to realize that the National Mall exists there and what's on it. Well, we had several, several World War II vets that had also served in Korea and in Vietnam. In fact, Mr. Peters, who I was a guardian for had served uh, early in Vietnam and so he was uh, very interested in of course the World War II monument but then was you know quite taken with the Korean monument and and the uniform that those statues uh, you know was more typical of what you and I would have worn mm -hmm. before the BDUs all these fancy right. new uniforms um, and the, the you know the giant size of the Korean right. War monument as they climb up a hill but this was, uh, the reason I call it my day to remember is because I had connections that this, I was paying re respect to these connections. Uh, on the Vietnam Wall, I have a, there's a name, the individual was in uh, my squad at Fort uh, Bragg, I was called, I had a tour of active duty, 61-62. And when we were being released from the active duty period, we could, individuals could, re could enlist in regular army and stay on active duty. And this boy in my squad decided he's going to stay on active duty. He asked me what I, th I thought, and I said, go for it. And uh, so he did. He went to school, went to flight school, learned how to fly a helicopter. And... Uh, he lost his life in Vietnam. He's on the wall. Mm -hmm. Well, I was I was pleased to uh, at that point to have uh, Sally Thayer, a, a nurse uh, who had served in World War II, and um, I was pushing the wheelchair and ask her would she mind if I went to visit a person who went to high school with me who was lost in Vietnam. And I, she, you know, you stop at, at the little kiosk and there's a book and, mm -hmm. and it's alphabetical right. and it will tell you which uh, granite slab. To, to find the person that you're looking for. And Miss Thayer, uh, Nurse Thayer, was, was gracious enough to indulge me, you know, on my time there to, to find somebody, uh, a gentleman named Fred Gassman, who was in my class in high school. And, you know, and she helped me, you know, once we found the slab, then you have to find exactly where right, the name correct. is. Right, correct. That is a massive yeah. by itself. It is a, it is a place and that you're really quiet when you, when you go through there. It, it is... It is very a solemn, a solemn place. You feel a solitude, yeah. and uh, I was there for the main purpose of uh, paying respects to, mm -hmm. seeing the what was there, but paying respects to people that could not have seen it. Yeah. When we, you know, returned, left the Iwo Jima monument, back on the buses, people are getting pretty tired. It's it's <clears throat> you know three or four o'clock in the afternoon, and back to Reagan National Airport. The experience coming home, um, you know, with the mail call, uh, arriving back in Pensacola, 
Tell us about tell us about that. I think everybody was just ready to get off the airplane. Is that how you expected it to turn out? We, I, I expected it would be it would not be like it turned out. I mean, uh, we had to wait for a group to form. I mean, a band to form, and they, the music was playing, and everybody is hands shaking, and uh, then all of a sudden here is people that ha that has to hold a a military salute for the length of time that they had to hold that salute until everybody passed through one by one. I mean, to get a salute from the active duty people, uh, it was all awesome. Good. Well, and I'm always proud to say that <clears throat> an Army general is the one that calls all those people to attention. You know, he sits on our board and he calls that group to attention so that when you go through, you, you've gone through that final a salute of honor, uh, you know, and then, yeah. then are recovered with your families. And, uh, and we find a lot of people, uh, you know, lingered that that ceremony there and then the family gathering lasted about a half hour as people and hugged right. and shook hands and said the goodbye. Hands are out, the hands are out for a handshake and welcome back. And the words welcome back, they meant something. Because I look back, coming back to my hometown in 1945 in Newport, New Hampshire. And in a little small time, very seldom did I, even then, five years later, did I know a lot of people. At the same time, welcome back didn't exist in 1945 when we went home. Well, Merle, I want to thank you for coming in today. I know this is, you know, it was a lot of fun. And you say you want to go back as a guardian, and we're certainly going to keep your name on the list. And, you know, I'm just delighted that you were able to go and that you've been an ambassador for this program to people. And, and a lot of folks are going to see this, and I they're am, going to say, if Merle could do this, I can do this. I am so happy that I happened to spot the initial information on the internet, submitted an application for, it was in for before Flight One was formed, but I had my application in, and then I still, I saved my letter, I said, uh, my dear John letter, that you can't make the first flight, but save it, there may be another one. That's right. And yep. uh, I was so happy when I got the call, asked me if I was still interested. Well, I'm just delighted that you went with us, and. Let me wrap this up with the, the folks that are watching. The generation that we're visiting with and that we take to D.C., um, you know, some people have called them the greatest generation. You know, uh, greatest generation. What they are certainly is the most humble generation. While you see the ticker tape parades of the return, V-Day, V-J Day, uh, you would see the kissing sailor, you know, all those famous Life magazine photos. What, what you really find out is that many people were still on a slow boat from China, were still occupying Germany, occupying Japan. This is a way with the Emerald Coast Honor Flight, in this particular case, to take these people who just came back and went to work, to take them up to see DC, to see all the various monuments, uh, and, and in some small way, thank them for what they did for our nations. To make a donation, please mail your check to Emerald Coast Honor Flight, P.O. Box 86, Pensacola, Florida, 32591.